fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Diving Doris is 13, and she is the diving queen. She can do a flip feet because she knows she's got go power. Cheerios, yes, she's got go power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. And so will you, once you're eating Cheerios every breakfast. You'll say the Cheerios taste simply wonderful, too. They're already cooked, shaped like little round O's, and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowl full, add fresh milk, and pitch in. You can almost feel the go power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins, and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you the good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Go power. You'll get it from Cheerios. Try it, and folks will say... She's feeling her Cheerios. Cafe owner Clay Duval was a good man and a churchgoer. When the new minister, Reverend John Mitchell, was forced to hold services in an old store, Duval made a decision. We're going to build the Reverend a church right here in Palamos. That's what we're going to do. Andy Burton, who acted as chief handyman for Duval, suffered from mental lapses caused by an injury in battle with the Indians. When years ago... He had been the best scout and Indian fighter in the territory. He was the one who drove Duval in a rig to all the ranch houses and farms around the hilled-in town of Palamos. And at these houses, Duval outlined a plan which he delivered as an ultimatum. We're going to build a church for the river. We're going to do it quick. All the money I take in for a week in my place is going into a fund. Now, I'm asking all you people to sell a few heads of stock, some of your farm goods... We'll hand all the money over to the Reverend. I'm going to count on you to help do it. The fundraising campaign was a success, and a day called Collection Day was set aside for accepting the funds of all contributors. Before mid-afternoon on Collection Day, Clay Duval, talking to some of the men in his cafe, told them... We've collected $4,000 so far. Before the day's over, I'm betting we have three times that much. That's good, huh? I wouldn't be surprised if I go to the bank in the morning if I had $15,000 to put in there. Most of the uh, ranch money hasn't come in yet. But... Two of the men who heard Duval's words were Red Oldham and Rico Grimes. They edged away from the group that stood around Duval. Come on, Rico, let's get out of here. Sure, let's find motion. Did you hear what Duval said? Three times $4,000. He said it might be even... Fit. Just a minute, but... you with the red hair. Huh? It's that crazy galoot, Andy Burton. Say, didn't I used to know you once? All right, get out of the way, you crazy old galoot. Uh, that fella gives me the creeps. He's always asking me if he knows me. Yeah, maybe he does. They say he's been out here longer than anybody else. You think maybe... I think maybe we better get out to the ranch and see the boss. <laughs> A short time later, the two men, Red and Rico, arrived at the ranch house of their boss, the man who called himself Martin Travis. 
They told him of the money that was being taken in on church collection day. And poor Stupel says he'll have maybe as much as $15,000 by tonight. He's going to take to the bank in the morning. We heard them say that. Meaning he'll probably leave it in his safe overnight. We'll make sure he puts the money in the safe first. And when we know that, well, don't worry. I have ideas. Good ideas. Later that same evening, shortly after midnight, Red Oldham galloped his horse away from Palamos. West of town, away from the main road, he met with Martin Travis and Rico Grimes, who had been waiting in the underground. Oh, 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 boy. I couldn't get here sooner. They collected money right up to 12 o'clock. How much did they get? I don't know, but it was a lot. Well, put it away. And says he's going to close his place at 2 o'clock. So as everybody can get up early and be on hand when he turns over the collection money to Reverend Mitchell. <laughs> yeah, that is a laugh, Rico. Yeah. Red, you did all right. Now the rest is up to us, Rico. Don't worry. I know what I have to do. I have a fuse already. Just help me get these two cans of oil across the cattle of my saddle. Yeah, I'll help you. Whose place are you going to burn? George Ramirez. But let's get Rico started. The sooner we do this thing, the better. A short time later in the rambling storage bins adjacent to Farmer George Rivera's barns, Rico Grimes poured the inflammable liquid on the walls and floor. Then he ran a long fuse leading from the building towards the woods. He struck a match and placed it against the end of the fuse. When he was sure the fuse was burning, he returned to his horse, mounted, and galloped back to his waiting companions. Rico, astride his horse, as were Martin Travis and Red Oldham, watched until tongues of flame suddenly shot into the night sky from the spot they knew to be the Rivera farm. There it goes, boss. Look at those flames. Nice work, Rico. We should hear the town fire bell in just a little while. The men inside Clay Duval's cafe responded to the alarm at once, running into the street and heading for their horses and the scene of the fire. Joining them was Clay Duval himself. He stopped at the door of his office before taking leave and spoke to Andy Burton. Andy, you stay here and watch out for the safe. Hey, Drew, you stay here too. See, si. I'm going to fire with the other men. You watch out for the cafe. Andy's taking care of the office. See, si, Senor Duval. I keep good look for things. You back. Hidden by the trees and underbrush, the three crooks, Red, Rico, and Travis, watched as riders, singly and in groups, galloped past on their way from town to fight the fire. Well, that must be nearly everybody. Now, wait. Here comes another rider. It's Duval. Yeah, that's Duval. You can tell his horse easy. Well, he's gone. Now, let's get to town. We'll go by the back trail and make it fast. Come on, here. Get up. At the same moment, in a temporary camp in the hills directly above the scene of the fire, the Lone Ranger and Toto, startled by the alarm, mounted their horses. You said it'd be caught. That's a bad fire, Toto. Men down there may need our help. Be ready. Come on, sir. In town, the three crooks entered the rear door of Clay Duval's cafe, the door that led to the owner's office. They wore bandanas across their faces. Travis led the way. Now, the lights are on, so be careful. Yeah. I'll close the door, Red. You cover the door that leads to the cafe. Now. You vermin! Hey, what? What do you think you're up to? It's Andy. The local one. He has a gun. Grab him before he fires. I'll shoot the lot of you. Uh, you take can't... off that bandana. Uh, Rico. Uh, the redhead. I know who you are. Shut I... up. Oh, you fool. He saw your face. He'll never remember it, that old coot. Now, come on. Let's get the money. Well, let's get to work in the safe. Martin Travis, working smoothly and efficiently, had the safe open within a few minutes. <laughs> that was a cinch. <laughs> hey, the money's in sacks. I think it's the money. Let's see. Yeah, that's the money, all right. Look at it. Well, grab a sack each of you. All right, boss. <laughs> Say, what about the old cootie stern? Bring him with us, Rico. Use that gun again. Be glad to, boss. Glad to. <laughs> Rico, you're throwing him across the saddle. Yeah, boss. 
Red has the money bag set, too. Let's get riding east to the hideout. Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! The Lone Ranger and Tonto neared the scene of the diminishing fire and dismounted. They could see men fighting the flames, and they began to walk toward them. But a man carrying buckets of water saw them. He dropped the pails and drew his gun. Get your hands out of there and stand right where you are, boy. You're making a mistake, mister. Tonto, We're here. Don't you set fire to my place, that's who you are. Start walking over there to the sheriff. I assure you, we have nothing to do with the fire. We came down from our camp in the hills to help fight it. I said walk. Now do it or I'll plug you. Go on and keep them hands up. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Sailor Sam is the smartest boy who ever shouted ship ahoy. He can weather any storm that blows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves. No other cereal looks like Cheerios. It's shaped like little letter O's. No other cereal tastes like Cheerios. It's the only ready-to-eat cereal with this fresh, toasted oat flavor. No other cereal is like Cheerios. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger and Tonto remained silent as the aroused farm owner, George Rivera, walked them to where the firefighters had finally brought the flames under control. Sheriff, men, look. I found these two were skulking back there near the trees. A masked man. Yeah, and an engine, too. They're the ones who must have set fire to my place. Okay. Sheriff Davis, you better take these. Two. Hello, Sheriff Davis. Remember me. I leap in cactus. If it isn't a masked man. And Tonto, too. Well, you mean you think they're not crooks? I assure you we're not crooks. My reason for wearing the mask of personal. Why, he sent more crooks to jail than I and all my deputies put together. Uh, Tonto and I were camped up there in the hills. When we saw the flames, we rode here as quickly as possible. I see you stopped the fire from spreading. Yeah. That's the best we could do. But all of George's barns and stable are burned to the ground. We saved his horses, though. That's one good thing. Sure. Mr. Rivera, you said before that someone started the fire. What did you mean by that? Well, we found oil cans near where the blaze must have started, and you can see where there was a rope fused, too. We were all in town, George included, collecting money for a church. Kimasami, look. Man and horse come plenty fast. Duval, it's Pedro. Pedro? Pedro, what's the matter? Why'd you come here? Oh, senor. Crooks, they come. Hit, senor Andy. Break open safe, what? make money, and right away. Pedro told of hearing shots in Duval's office while he, Pedro, was in the cafe. He told how the crooks knocked out Andy Burton and repeated their conversation. Pedro ended by explaining... They also take senor Andy across one horse like if he is dead. They ride away from town toward east, and then I heard it here. Uh, the filthy buzzards. They've stolen the money we collected for Reverend Mitchell. <laughs> it seems to me they might have started the fire out here as a decoy. That could be it. Maybe you're right, Sheriff. Men, let's get back as fast as we can. Come on. Yeah. Come on. From the moment Pedro arrived on the scene and told his story, attention had been riveted on him and the sheriff. The men had seemed to forget about the presence of the masked man and Indian. As the townsman rode after the sheriff and Duval, the Lone Ranger turned to Tonto. Well, what do you know about that? Them forget all about us. Just right away. Well, at least they didn't think of us as being implicated. Sheriff, tell them we friends. If he hadn't, we might be in real trouble, Tonto. Kimasabi. Yes? You hear what them say? Crooks take money, men collect for preacher. Yes, and the type of thief who'd do that deserves... 
Hello. Sheriff Davis didn't ask our help, but we'll give it to him. Ah. You right into town now? No. You saw how many men returned there with the sheriff. They'll be doing all the things that are obvious. Looking for leads and hoof prints and other forms of evidence. Uh, but crooks get far away. I doubt that they'll go too far, Toto. They're carrying a man who's dead or wounded. They have a reason for doing this. Boys say crooks right east. We know this territory, Toto. We know there are many places where crooks might hide in the hills east of town. You right there, Kimasabi? Yes, let's start now. Now, uh, this road curves on the way into town. It curves again on the other side of town. Uh, it make half circle. Exactly. So if we ride through the hills on a straight line, we'll be on the other side of town before the sheriff and his men get there. We get horses, Kimasabi? Yes, let's go, Toto. A few minutes later, just as the last sparks of the fire faded, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode into the hills. The Lone Ranger had guessed rightly. Martin Travis, Red Oldham, and Rico Grimes had taken the unconscious Andy Burton and the money bags to one of the caves east of Palamos, in the hills where the masked man and Indian were starting their seemingly futile search. The crooks gathered near a lighted lantern, counting the contents of the money bags before dividing the loot, and did not see the old Indian scout begin to regain consciousness. Yes, yes. Boys, it looks as if there might be more money here than we thought. Yeah. Give me that other bag. Red is sure. Oh, I see. Yeah. Hey, boy, sure. Andy Burton's brain may have been dim, but his instincts were still keen. The tricks of his craft as scout and fighter were deep within him. So now awake and aware of his plight, he pretended still to be unconscious. He let his right hand move slowly along the ground until it came in contact with a large stone. He gripped this tightly. Then he opened one eye and moved his head until he could see the scene around the lantern. Then, silently and imperceptibly, he inched back into the darkness. Suddenly, he heard the redhead's voice. Hey, no, guys. He's moving. Andy leaped to his feet and threw the rock at the lantern. The rock hit Rico, who staggered back as his gun went off. His body bumped into the lantern, which crashed to the ground and plunged the cave into utter darkness. Andy could hear the cries of consternation from the crooks as he ran toward the opening of the cave, the moonlight bright outside. Shots from inside whizzed around his head. As silhouetted against the opening, he dived into the underbrush outside. I've got to get out here. They catch up with me. I got to get out of here. Varmints, they're outside now. Must have seen me run in here. Ranger, separated from Tonto by a few hundred feet, heard the shots. Who's it? Who? Steady, Silver. Easy now, boy. Yes, we'll head that way. Easy. Come on. Who's it? Who? Easy, steady. Kimasabi, you all right? Yes, Tonto. That wasn't you firing? No. Chop, come from over. Listen and come closer. Here comes Maybe. someone through the brush. All right, you. Get your hands up. I'll shoot if you move. Don't. Don't me. Don't shoot. Light your lantern, Toto. Uh, there, Kim Hey, Don't shoot. Andy oh. Burton. Toto, this is Andy Burton. Maybe Crooks see light. He put out lantern. There, out now. Crooks will kill me. Stay down low. Move over this way. Andy, I know you. I think you'll know me when you see my face in the light. I'm your friend. Listen to me. I, I hear you. I remember you. Saw your mask just now. Andy, I hear you. It's no use. You can't get away. Where are you? Tell him where you are. Then move fast. Go on. Go. Here. Uh-huh. Don't shoot. I'm over here. I have no gun. That's it. Burn. Rico. Come in where you hear me. Go ahead. We hear you. Come on, turn I, I have no gun. Andy, it's no use. I'll get you. Ready, Toto. Uh-huh. Red Oldham pushed through the brush following the sound of Andy Burton's voice. As he did, Toto rose from the darkness and grabbed him. Yes. The oh. old ranger's gun crashed down on the crook's skull. Good, there's two more. Here they come. Red. Red, where are you? I'm over here. I can't see. Once more, Toto grabbed. But before the Lone Ranger swung, Rico shouted. Travis, watch out! The Lone Ranger hit Rico as Travis fired blindly from a few paces back. The Lone Ranger fired at the spot where he'd seen the flame from Travis's pistols. That got him. Toto, you look after that man. Andy, are you all right? Say, I sure am. You got them all, the three of them. 
Good, it's just like the old days oh. it was. Never seen anything like it. But, Andy, tell me, are these the three men who stole the money from the office of a man named Duval? Yeah. Light the lantern again so we can see better. This moonlight's not enough. Uh, me, light lantern. You know, I think they hit me so hard tonight that I'm starting to think right again. I'm remembering things. Yeah, they took the reverend's money, the crooks did. The way I remember, I tried to stop them. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Tonto, ably assisted by old but in some ways a new Andy Burton, met Sheriff Davis, Clay Duval, and the men of Palamos on the road east of the town. Sheriff, we took a shortcut while you rode into town. We were lucky. Here are the men you're looking for. And here's the Reverend's money. I have it right here, all safe and sound. Uh, Sheriff, what do you know? Those are the money bags, all right. Uh, men, put the cops on those three coyotes. Hi, right, Sheriff. Red Oldham, man. Huh? Rico Grimes. And of all people, Martin Travis. Wounded, huh? I bandaged his arm. It's not too bad. Sheriff, I think you'll find that Martin Travis is really an outlaw from Texas named Mike Tarleton. <laughs> he sure is. I remember him. Remember Red. He's an outlaw, too. I'm remembering a lot of things. The hits on the head they gave me did me good. Sheriff, let Andy tell you all that happened. Andy, you were in the center of things just as you were in the old days. There's a lot to tell, all right. And on account of you, I'm able to tell it. You'll not need me, then. Come on, Toto. Uh, hey, now, wait a minute, stranger. Uh, it's no use calling him back, Duval. I told you before, I know the man. That's the way he does things. Just well, seems like he did tonight. Just rides away like that. Yeah. yeah. He always seems to come from nowhere. But when he gets to a place, things happen. <laughs> and always for the good. Just like a preacher, huh? Like Reverend Mitchell, maybe. Well, not just like that. He sometimes uses a gun when a prayer doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> but if he helps build a church, well... Yep, Sheriff, I'll go along with you on that. But tell me, uh, who is the man? Shucks, I can remember that. He's the Lone Ranger. I don't do Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Don't ever doubt it. Champions are made, not born. You can get there. For example, take the story of Wheaties champion Stan Musial of the St. Louis Cardinals. Young Stan was willed no claim to fame, no magic way to learn the game. He had to sweat and give his all, learning to field and hit that ball. Sure, Wheaties was his breakfast call. Today they call him Stan the Man, still and always a Wheaties fan. Stan Musial has been powering up with Wheaties right along, 19 years. Good for Stan, good for you. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Now watch Stan belt that ball. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen.